Right then. Where are we? Nope. Is this my nope. Definitely not. No, no, don't know who that is. Who What's is that? I don't know, don't care. Come on, we must be here somewhere. Seriously? We're not? What? Oh. Oh. Oh, thanks, guys. To start off this week, some festive news for you all. Arctic reindeer numbers have plummeted by over half in the last 20 years due to climate change, modifying weather and vegetation. Oh, that wasn't very festive, was it? That's just a bit depressing. 5 million to 2.1 million in 20 years. Damn. Well, let's move on. In other news, two cosmonauts from the International Space Station have taken an ambitious spacewalk. Yesterday, they engaged in a six-hour mission to investigate a small hole that caused air pressure loss in the ISS earlier this year. They will also cut through some of the protective covering of the Soyuz MS-09 spacecraft, and samples will be sent back to Earth. It has been worryingly suggested that foul play was involved in the damage to the spacecraft, and hopefully whether this is true or not will be revealed soon. And a quick bit of news for you now. Remember around nine weeks ago, Voyager 2 was about to exit our solar system? Well, now it has. Yay! Ooh. This week, we also say hello to a brand new species of salamander from North America. This is the reticulated siren, Siren reticulata, an inhabitant of shallow streams and marshes in northern Florida and southern Alabama. Genetically, the organism is very different from all its siren relatives, and so it has therefore been named as a new species. It's actually relatively big for a salamander, about 60 centimetres in total length, meaning it is one of the largest new vertebrates named from the US in more than 100 years. Some truly incredible news was made this week when a study was published in the journal Nature that described a specimen of the ichthyosaur Stenopterygeus. This incredible fossil preserves evidence of blubber in the prehistoric reptile, meaning that we now know for certain that ichthyosaurs were warm-blooded, as this is a feature warm-blooded organisms have. In addition, the texture of its skin could be determined, revealing that these animals had lost the scaly skin of their reptilian ancestry, instead possessing skin more like that of modern whales. Further still, the fossil shows that these creatures also employed the use of counter-shading, having darker colours on the top part of their bodies and lighter colours on the underside, also like some modern whales. So it seems reasonable now to think of ichthyosaurs as basically prehistoric reptilian cetaceans. Also in paleontology news this week, a fascinating study has examined some of the causes of the huge loss of marine life that occurred during the end Permian mass extinction. Researchers found, using a model they had made to recreate the conditions in the oceans at this time, that an increase in global temperature due to volcanism caused the planet's waters to lose around 80% of its oxygen. Organisms that inhabited regions close to the poles were the most affected, since increasing water temperatures caused them to lose their habitats. When waters get warmer, metabolic rates also increase, and so there was just not enough oxygen to sustain large amounts of life. This rise in temperature accounts for about half of the marine die-off, and, as the researchers say, it's frighteningly relevant to our current environmental situation. That's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. Sorry if I sound a bit off, I have got a bit of a cold, but that doesn't matter. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you, and if you do do that, or have already, we'll see you on Sunday.